guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go to this very entertaining and unusual email that was sent from a subscriber. That's from a guy, sounds like he's probably in his late 20s, maybe early 30s. And he shares his story, how he ultimately ended up saving his bro from getting really hit financially by his ex-girlfriend and baby mama. You're going to see in this story, guys, that this guy narrating this is telling the story about his friend. His friend, I believe, named John, or that's his code name, named John. And he was with this girl for a long time. They had a kid together, and she started to act really crazy. No surprise there. Had a crazy mother living with them and all that. And ultimately, the relationship ended, and she threatened to really come after this dude uh, for finances well beyond what he should actually pay. You know what I mean there, the uh, for support. And she always liked this guy's friend, the guy telling the story here. And ultimately, since there was no love lost between this dude and his ex-girlfriend, this guy started getting involved with her. And as long as he was involved with her like a friend of benefits, she stayed away and stopped bothering her this guy's friend for money, right? And eventually, he was able to get him out of it completely. So it's quite an unusual story about uh, truly the bros sticking together and using her own uh, ways of the gals today against her. I know it sounds a little confusing the way I was describing this, but just bear with me. This is an entertaining story. So you're going to definitely like how this thing plays out and how it ends. So it starts off. He says, uh, Dear SSM, I'm new to the channel and I love the content, but I absolutely treasure the camaraderie and helpful advice from you, you, your, you yourself, and the SSM community as a whole. I wanted to deliver the first of two experiences I'm willing to share in hopes that there may be some of the fellows going through similar situations and or at least briefly entertain the rest of the community. Well, I got to tell you, this is a great community. I mean, you guys, whenever I do a video, even the worst videos get hundreds of comments and the really good videos, thousands. And it seems like a lot of you guys actually are familiar with each other and you're all chit-chatting and commenting away. It's pretty cool. Never in a million years did I think it would go in that direction. But I'm glad you're enjoying it, bro. He says, uh, let me begin by stating a very controversial position I have always had and held in the absolute minority on. I cannot, for the life of me, understand the idea of being opposed to a friend of mine dating or dealing with a chick I once dated or dealt with in the past. I'm no longer with her for a reason. We have no ties anymore whatsoever. I can't imagine being upset or offended that someone I know sees dating value in her. It simply doesn't make any sense to me in any form. Obviously, that means I don't comprehend why a friend of mine would, would be uncomfortable with or feel betrayed by me dating or dealing with someone from their past. Again, as I stated earlier, I have always been in the extreme minority with this view. Now for the story. Well, I'm going to address that thing at the end because I'm not going to interrupt the story now, but I'll address that whole, my opinion, why guys shouldn't get involved with uh, their bros, girlfriends, or whatever thing like that, e even if they ended amicably, and I'll share my opinion on that later. It says, I have a, cr a close friend, let's call him John, that I've known for over a decade. He and his high school sweetheart, let's call her Jane, have a child together. I've never been close to his child's mother, but have known her for quite some time based on their relationship. John has reached out to me to drop money out to me to drop money on groceries or toys off to her for the child whenever he was short on money. Uh, he even had me tr uh, provide transportation for her and the child if even their vehicle was down or he was too busy to handle it himself. So you're a loyal friend. So Jane and I became pretty cool, but solely based off her and John's relationship. At one point, John wanted to marry Jane and truly begin their lives together as a family under the same roof. Jane was always hopeful of that, as they had dated for about four years up until that point. So John and I both thought this would be a done deal. Well, Jane's mother, let's call her the Devil's Anus Reincarnated, or Bertha for short, was exceptionally materialistic and generally bitter towards men. Ah, imagine that. Uh, she was a divorcee, a single mom herself, and didn't trust or care for John, though he'd always been a good boyfriend to Jane and stellar father to the child. Aha! Uh -huh. A bitter, over-the-hill... Single M-O-M. And is materialistic, by the way. She, she always uh, ragged on him about not having a better job, more money, better vehicles, a big expensive house to bring the baby home to. And he says, keep in mind, she didn't want. Let me reiterate, she wouldn't allow Jane to move in with John regardless. 
Well, prior to asking Jane the big question, he and Bertha got into a bit of an argument. John stayed calm and cool, as he always had, but this time Bertha's attacks and insults went a bit too far. There's an example why I tell you guys of dating relationships. Before you get very serious with a girl, see what her family's like. And if they got a lot of problems or they're hostile towards you, then you walk. You don't need that because that's going to become your family. And right here, he shares a kid with this girl and this is the, his child's grandma. This is what he has to fucking deal with. <clears throat> John left quickly to keep from doing something he would later regret and simply approach Jane about it later that evening. She wasn't answering his calls or returning his text messages outside of closed off one word responses every once in a while. It was clear something that was off and different. I told him to stop chasing her for communication as it would seem as though he was the one in the wrong and had something to apologize for. That is exactly what I would advise as well. Good job. If for any reason Jane had sided with her mom, him chasing after her like that would simply embolden her to, to childish resolve. Sadly, I was right. To both of our shock, Jane sided wholeheartedly with her mom. It was as if she flipped a switch instantly, she disliked John, didn't trust John, didn't really want to spend time with him together, with her child, etc. But it was purely based on her mother's bitterness. Jane even told John she was going to have to put him, put him on child support through the courts. So here we go. He says, uh, as you know, child support can be a virtual kiss of death that you're never fr really free from, especially if the courts have any way of squeezing more out of you. Now, John is RP strong, and he broke up with her, son, her soon as she, her shenanigans began, maybe after two weeks of her childish disrespect. Yet, because of the support talk, and from a sincere place of desperation, John asked if I would try to talk some sense into her on his behalf, at least in hopes of keeping things cool enough to avoid a court-ordered support. He said uh, to make it seem organic and not to tell her that he sent me. Of course, I agreed. So after a fairly lengthy texting conversation that, that evening, Jay and I decided to link up the following day to speak in person. Now, remember, his buddy here, John, requested this. So obviously there's no love lost between him and her at this point. He's done with her like a switch, done. So he doesn't care what happens you're about to see. Uh, we typically... Um, we decided to meet in person. We typically hugged whenever we greeted one another, but there was definitely a bit of a less platonic nature to this embrace from her side, as in I had fully released released, and her arms were still wrapped around my neck area, body to body. I hadn't even approached her from the front. I tried to give her that little side hip church hug like normal, but she wanted something different. So my radar was a bit more in tune to her advancements she may have been making, and it turns out that she was certainly making them. So already she's moving on like that to this, to the best friend. Classy girl. I know she wanted the plausible deniability of being able to say I never specifically said I was into him or I never specifically said I wanted to spend more time with him in case I added her to John. But she's making it clear regardless. I was able to leave that engagement without any incident and knew I had to report to John what my findings were from last night's conversation and that day's entanglement. Good. Keeping your buddy in the loop here. That's that's the way to go, and, and, and you're going to see how this whole thing plays out. It says, if I'm being perfectly honest, I never thought she was hot. She was always cute, but I tried to turn my brain off to anything beyond that because she was actually in a relationship with my boy. Good, bro. That's what I do, too. Well, I finally took a legit look at her, and yeah, she was hot. Smoking hot. About five foot four, 110 pounds, small C cup, and a Coke bottle shape after the baby. Wow, my type. I'll attach a G read picture of two. He included three pictures of her, which no, I'm not going to share, guys. And she's good looking. She's, uh, in my opinion, based on the G read pictures, he sent an eight. I'd nail her. Before I knew what she's like, I just saw her down the street and said, okay, she's an eight. I'd nail her based on those pictures. <clears throat> he says here, our ensuing text conversations, which were happening daily, progress rapidly into the realm of non-platonic flirtatious conversation. Well, then take her long to get over your buddy John. 
It always began with discussions of her and John and the baby, and always calmed and I always calmed her down from doing something extreme in regards to their relationship, typically based on something new Bertha was angry about. But these conversations were really about us. Soon she started sending me pictures of outfits for for my opinion on them, which quickly became swimsuits and for when she was taking the baby to the pool, or even lingerie for when she and, and John get back together. He says, do you think he'll like this type of crap? Unsurprisingly, these interactions escalate into an intense sexual relationship. She's doing this. She probably liked this friend all along, but she's also doing this. She's looking for the next guy that could potentially be a, a provider for her kid or flat out to get revenge on her ex, this guy's buddy, John. She doesn't give a shit. But uh, these guys are secretly having the last laugh. Uh, at least once a week, we were hooking up under whatever platonic guise we could manufacture. Again, every encounter and discussion began with putting out whatever fire that was occurring between Jane and John, but ended with us destroying headboards. It was a pretty surreal scenario. I'm banging this smoking hot chick who has done nothing but threaten one of my best friends with taking his kid away and putting him on support over the past year and a half by this point. And to be honest, I was fine with it. If I can be perfectly honest, I was really enjoying it. Dude, you got it made. You're nailing this 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 damn good looking girl, and I guarantee you she's giving you whatever you want. And you're helping your bro. You're helping because what he's doing, guys, is that every time she's getting into some altercation with his buddy here, he goes off to see her, romances her. Well, not really romances, but he just rolls in the hay with her. It calms her down, and then she backs off the friend from from taking action, threatening to take the kid away, and trying to you know rake him over the coals in the family courts for support and all that. Every time, what a great situation! Just. I, I'm assuming this whole time he was ultra careful with the protection. God almighty, if he got her pregnant. Now, this might be a good time to mention the final details of that very first encounter after the initial long night of texting. As I stated, I don't understand the idea of not dating someone from a friend's past or me being upset at a friend of mine for wanting to pursue something with one of my exes. But I would never act on it if one of my people felt that way. There's a universal law that can never be abandoned, bros before... You guys know. That day I went to meet her and she flirted with me the entire time. I left her and went straight to John and told him the whole thing. In spectacular, clear, straightforward English, I said, Bro, if I was willing, I could have had her right then and there. She was ready for it. She was asking for it. John's immediate response was, Good, do it. I'm dead serious. Keep that bee busy and off my back. As he fixed me, himself, and his new girlfriend a drink who was in the other room. John's already on a new girl at this point. This is reflecting again on that first encounter. The remainder of that evening and every few weeks over the next couple of years, we meticulously execute a plan to keep him out of the courts, uh, accessible to his child and away from his psychotic baby mama and her mama. Anytime things got a little testy or she threatened him with the court, I would swoop in like the perfect white knight dog, dog John after being such a scumbag, chill her out and make her happy and then text and email John the conversations or link up with him to describe the encounter in full detail. This is awesome. And again, this guy's got it made. Uh, part of this too was collecting evidence that would help him gain custody if they ever went to court and since I was often in the home with, this, with the crazy mother as well, we had plenty more than enough evidence of a toxic dysfunctional family unit. Well, the sad thing is your buddy John's son is being raised in this environment. The family courts aren't fair to men, but they would have almost almost had to burn the entire constitution to award her custody after the amounts of evidence we had collected over the 18 to 24 month period. Anyway, this went on for about two years until a new guy came into the picture and actually married her. Well, eventually she's going to have to get some sucker to uh, help pay the bills and all that. So to no surprise, she found some sucker and watch this, guys. He was a full-on baby blue pill, beta simp sissy, and is so jealous and threatened by John that he won't allow her to put him on child support even if she wanted to. There you go. Mr. White Knight swoops in. He's like, no, no, no. He's not going to pay. I can pay. I'm going to be the strong man taking care of my girl and some other dude's kid. What a great deal for John. You held her off all this time, and now some sucker who probably would hate me and hate my work has to deal with her. 
Uh, he doesn't want her to really have any ties or business with him whatsoever outside of when they drop the kid off to one another. It's all based on the fact that John and her first and obviously father her first child and only child to that point. So now he has two more children by the now she has two more children by the new guy and they all live together in a small house. Of course there's two more kids. She's got a it's an insurance policy. And with her mother. At one point, Jane texted me that while her mother was in an emotional tirade, she actually let it slip out that she would rather John stayed around if she had known that Jane was going to marry this guy, which is a really crazy because this guy seems to be a good husband and father. He probably is. He, you know, because you are a uh, subscriber to my channel, and I'm assuming your buddy John is, and you guys are RP'd. I'm glad it's working out for you, but this this is just another poor sucker out there that might be writing me in the future because of how she's taking advantage of him. But you know what? You guys are my boys, so I want you guys to be okay. So you know what? Tough shit for him until he becomes part of the club. Uh, he's a weak man overall and a bit sensitive, but nothing that would lead Bertha to despise him, which is precisely the situation with John. Uh, we definitely had a hearty laugh about that. I can imagine. I'll close this with saying the most recent interaction we had with one another was when the new husband was out of town for work and she reached out to John via text. What I tell you, they always come back. What I tell you, they always reach out. In a very flirtatious manner. She clearly wanted him to come over to spend some time with the kid and her while the hubby was away. She is a typical gal of the 2020s. Since he would never allow it. Me, John, and his new lady, and my girlfriend burst out laughing as we were all together at his apartment watching the game. A few minutes later, I randomly texted her to check up on her, and she basically copied and pasted the same line she used on John and tried to get me to come by. Oh my god. I mean, honestly, this doesn't surprise me, but... Empowerment. A few minutes later... Oh, excuse me. I uh, randomly texted her to check up on her... Uh, my bad, my bad. Uh, at one point, she sw we switched phones and responded to her as the other person just to see if she would notice any changes in, notice any change in tone or style or anything. Uh, sometimes we would send the exact same messages word for word, but a few minutes apart. She was such a horn dog, she never noticed. John and I both have tried to speak to the beta baby daddy, but he's made it abundantly clear that he doesn't like or trust either of us, even going so far as to say anything that has ever happened between either of us and her he doesn't want to know about, and he doesn't care when it happened. So these guys have actually tried to help this dude out, and he doesn't want to hear it. He sounds like the type of guy that comes on my channel and hates on me. And every once in a while, I'll get guys that hate my work that'll actually email me and yell at me. They're always funny. Or message me on uh, Instagram or they'll comment in the comment. A lot of the guys that, that hate my work have learned never comment in the comment section of these videos. Because what happens is, and I'm sure some of you guys have seen this, these haters will come on and hate whatever I'm talking about. And you guys will just for lack of a better term, crucify them in the comment section, and they never come back. <laughs> but they tried to help this guy, but he doesn't want to hear it. So, tough shit. He says here, uh, he's the type of guy, he's the type, of, he's the type that would hang around and raise a child after finding out it isn't his, and continue to date the lying mother too. Some people you just cannot help. As for John, he's an upper management of an engineering team, making well over six figures now. He still doesn't have a big fancy house, but his apartment in the heart of downtown is nice, and his BMW is always so fresh and clean. Anyway, hope you and the community enjoy this, and remember guys, no matter what, bros before hoes. Well man, that is definitely a different type of story there. I think it's really cool it worked out. I'm glad your bro John didn't get on the hook for the support and and raked over the coals because you just stalled her. And then she found some poor sucker, but it's his fault, in my opinion. And now he's paying the bills and John's off the hook. Cool. Now, I'm going to go back to the whole... We talked about in the beginning about guys dating other buddies' friends and you couldn't understand why. Here's the problem. Most relationships end badly, okay? So if your buddy... Say you have a friend. This is just in any situation, guys. You got a buddy whose girlfriend, they broke up. She broke up with him either because, you know, it wasn't working out or she cheated. I don't know what. And he was hurt. Well, you can't go dating her down the road because she broke up with him and it's going to mess up your friendship. Or if, uh, even if it was an amicable breakup, like let's just say you had two that were involved for a little while 
and they, they liked each other, they had fun, but things broke up because just it wasn't going to work. There wasn't a future. They weren't compatible. Well, even then, if you broke up and he even said, yeah, go ahead and date her. I don't care. Well, down the road, if you did date her and you got serious, he might change his mind down the road. It might make it awkward and that could cause a rift between you and friends. So in my opinion, it's just not a good idea. Now, in this situation, this was purely you got the green light from your buddy John to date, to fool around with her purely because he was done with her completely, okay? And it was a tactic to stall her and keep her off, off him from dragging him through the courts and putting him in an unfavorable situation financially as with the kid. So there was a reason to this. But if if it was purely like relationship-wise, I think it would be different. And also, I might add, is if a couple breaks up, and you got a bro that broke up with a girl, well, there's a reason he broke up with her because there's some issue with her that you want to be in a relationship with. So again, it's not the best situation. So in this case, it was unusual because you were helping him with a big with a big plan to get him off of being taken advantage of through her. And it worked. It worked like a charm. And this guy who wrote this story, he had it made. He was nailing this hot piece of ace regularly and helping his boy. So what a great deal. But this is why I did this story because it's rare. But anyhow, guys... Bros before hoes. YouTube will probably now flag me because I said this, but we'll see. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. Let this guy know what you think. Also, guys, if you got a good story like to share, by all means, email to me, strongsuccessfulmail at gmail.com. Just make sure uh, you write it really easy for me to read. And I'll, if it's a good one, I'll cover it down the road. But I do get more and more emails every day, and I try to choose the best ones to make this as fun and entertaining as possible. Or if I don't do your story right away, I might be putting on hold down the road because I, I don't want to do the same type of story every freaking day. It gets kind of repetitive. So... And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.